So welcome. This is the talk, Ansible Deployment and Management Updates for IDM. Um, according to the plan, it changed a little bit, so there will be no bigger demo. If there is time left, there will be a small demo, but um, let's start. So um, the agenda you see there, there are several things. So a small, small overview over Ansible Free API. Um, and afterwards, the changes. So for the roles, for management modules, new roles, and new management modules, and also utilities in the end. So um, here you have a overview of an over Ansible Free API at the, in the current state. So all the um, bold mod things are um, the new stuff that has been added since last DevConf. So um, we have an additional role. This is the IPA backup role for backup and restore. And for management modules, according uh, additionally to the other ones, so last time we added HBAC and also DNS stuff. And now we have um, several modules, RBAC, RBAC modules, and also IPA location, IPA trust. I will show some um, examples about this later in the demo, uh, in, in this presentation, I'm sorry. So the availability and distribution ver and versions, this has not changed. Um, so we still have um, RPMs, we have a collection in Galaxy, and we have several di supported distributions. Um, in Debian 10, I think um, server is now possible, but I'm not sure, so this needs to be verified. Um, and for all management modules, we have a minimum requirement of IPA 4.4. And for the deployment roles, so for server, um, we have 4.5 plus, for replica, we have 4.6 plus, and for client, we have 4.4 plus. Um, so simply let's say everything um, with 4.6 up is supported by all roles and modules. So the requirements. Um, so on the controller, we need an Ansible version. Um, 2.8 plus is supported for all um, RPMs that we are providing for Ansible Free API and also upstream. Um, we also have a, a collection, Ansible collection in Galaxy. Um, right now it's fully supported in Ansible 2.8 and 2.10 plus. Um, there is an issue with 2.9 right now in the, de in the deployment roles. Um, you will run into a spec is none error um, because Ansible is importing module utils not in the really correct way. So it tries to um, load all imports and fails because um, it's trying this on the controller to make sure to copy the right files to the nodes. Um, there is currently a workaround. Um, this is work in progress. Um, so this is something that we will add in the next weeks um, to make the Ansible Collection Galaxy working uh, for the deployment. Additionally, you will need K in it. So you will need Kerberos utilities. Um, as soon as you want to use a one-time password. And Python 3 GSS API is required also for OTP. Um, if you use a key tab for installing the client. On the node, um, you will need a supported free IP version and a supported distribution. Uh, that means you need to have the packages for free IP available and also um, the files in Ansible free IP that are defining which packages or modules need to be installed to be able to use free IP. So we have enhancement in deployment roles. So um, there is one thing that has been added for IPA server and IPA replica roles for the deployment. So um, there is a new setting that is called IPA server firewall dzone for the server and IPA replica firewall dzone for the replica. Um, up to now, um, firewall D is um, automatically enabled and also configured. Within, within the default zone. And with the setting, you can define to use another zone for file, for the server and replica deployment. 
it's very important to open the firewall. Um, so for the server, the firewall is opened after the deployment. Um, but for replica, it needs to be opened before because there is a connection check that is making sure that the replica is able to speak to the server and the other way around. So it's very important to open the firewall ports for um, for um, free IPA for IPA before you deploy. Otherwise, you will fail. So the connection check will fail, and you will see an error message. And to be able to have this a little bit more um, tunable, we have this setting now. So um, it simplifies life if you have more than one zone in use and want to um, and want to have your server only available within your internal zone, for example. We have also enhancements and management modules. So for IPA group, the POSIX option has been added. So now it's, it's possible to um, ensure a group has been changed, has been added with a non, within an, a group is a non POSIX group or to change from a non POSIX to a POSIX group. But the second one, um, yeah, it cannot be completely unimportant. Yeah, because it's changing the type. So um, it is unimportant. It's not failing, but yeah. And in the first try, it will make sure that it's not POSIX. In the second one, in the second try, it will not fail. So, um, and we have new roles. And this is the biggest addition to Ansible Free AP. In the latest version, we have the IVA backup role. This role is able to do um, backup and restore of IPA servers, so servers and replicas. You can do a server local backup and also backup to a controller. You can copy backup files, existing backup files, um, or even all backup files that are available um, on the server. So, and let's not say files, it's a directory here, in fact. Um, from the server to the controller, you can also remove specific backups or all backups from the server. You can restore a local backup um, on the server and also from a controller. And it will, if you restore and you have a empty machine with no packages installed, it will make sure that the needed packages are installed to be able to restore properly. Um, and it will fail if the packages cannot be found. So uh, it's needed to have the packages in the repository or yum configured or DNF or whatever you use to um, install packages on your system. It can copy backups from the controller to the server and it will configure firewall D accordingly. And there is also a setting to turn firewall D configuration off the same as we have in IPA server and IPA replica role. And here we have an example of IPA backup role uh, usage. You see uh, it's using IPA server and it's uh, doing a backup to the controller. So IPA backup to controller is yes. This defaults to no, which means there will be a local backup on the server itself. Um, there is another setting um, to make sure uh, to define if um, if IPA backup to controller is set to yes, to keep um, the backup on the server. This defaults to no. So as soon as you say IPA backup to controller yes, um, the backup will be will be transferred to the controller and removed from the server afterwards. Um, so IPA backup keep on server um, can be set to yes to keep it also on the controller uh, on the server itself after copying to the controller. Here we have another example um, to restore an IPA server from controller. So you see IPA backup name is set to, um, to the backup name. By the way, if you do a backup within here, um, it automatically renames your backup. Um, so you will have the server name as a prefix to make sure that you can um, have several backups at the same time. So let's say you have a server and several replicas 
and you're creating backups of all of those, um, then um, you're not running into name issues because the server name and replica name will be the prefix of the backup of the backup directory that is created on the controller. So in here we are copying, uh, we are restoring from the controller. That means in the first place, this um, backup is copied back to the server from the controller. And then this backup is applied. And you see, you need to give um, this also the, the DM password. Um, but this is the also the case with the command line tools. So this role is more or less a big wrapper around the command line tools um, to allow to, to use the controller also. And it has the same requirements as usual. And you see the state is restored. This means this will be restored. Um, if you um, instead use state copied, it will only copy this backup to the, uh, from the controller to the server, but then you don't need the password. There is another example here, for example. Um, so here we are copying a backup from the iPad server, several backups from the iPad server. Um, you see the iPad backup names, these are the names on the control uh, on the server without the prefix. And iPad backup to controller is set to yes and state is copied. So it will make sure it will copy those um, from the server to the controller. By the way, it will fail if you provide names that are not existing. And the second one on the right um, is to remove all backups from the IPA server. If IPA backup name here is not all, um, but the same as on the left side, it will only remove those. But if it's all, it will remove all available backups on the, on the server. And the state here is absent. So IPA backup is a fairly um, powerful role. Um, and I think you will have fun with it. And here's um, another example. We are copying a backup from the controller to the iPad server. And you see here, iPad backup name is the full name on the controller. Um, it might be possible to change this in the future that um, it's using the IPA server name, looking for the IPA backup name with a short word, with, with the normal um, name on, on the server and to automatically prepend the, the name of the server. But this is not there, but it might be um, added in the future. It should be simple to do. So we have new management modules also in Ansible Free IPA. So here you see a list. So there is IPA location and IPA trust. IPA location has been added only as a test for um, a utility that I will show later on. IPA trust was an external contribution um, to manage domain trusts. And we have role-based access control, so RBAC modules. So IPA delegation to manage delegation and delegation attributes. IPA permission to manage permissions and permission attribute members. IPA privilege to manage privileges and privilege permission members. And IPA role to manage roles and members. These are users, groups, hosts, host groups, privileges, and services. I will show examples about this later on. And we have IPA self-service um, to manage self-service and self-service attributes. So here we see a simple example of IPA location. IPA location is a fairly small module. It cannot do really a lot. So it simply makes sure that a location with the name my location one and the description of my location one exists. It cannot do a lot more. It can also remove locations, but the the only um, the only thing it can do is adding and um, making sure that locations are present or absent. So we are coming to trust IPA trust module. 
Um, so the first example is making sure that a one-way trust is present. And um, yeah, I cannot even show an example for this if I want to, because I do not currently have a Windows machine um, that I can use as AD trust for this. Um, and the second one is making sure that a two-way trust is existing. So you see there's the additional two-way um, setting set to true. It should be yes, not true. But both are working. And so we are coming to the RBAC modules. So there is the IPA delegation module. Um, so in the first example, you see it's ensuring that a delegation is present with the attributes business category and employee type and group managers and member group employees. And the second example shows that you can add, add attribute or make sure that attributes are present or absent with the action member. So um, here in this, uh, in this example, you see it's making this task is making sure that employee type and em employee number are absent for this um, delegation with the name basic manager attributes. You can also use present to make sure that attributes are present. Um, and also you can remove delegation modules and you can or make sure that they're not existing. And you can also um, change groups and member groups with a task. So the second one is IPA permission module. So the first example ensures that the permission, my permission is present with object type host and all rights. And the name of this permission is my permission. And in the second example, you see, um, you can also use action member for attributes here. So it's making sure that Geekos um, is present in, in the, my permission. You can also use um, state absent here to make sure that an attribute is absent in a permission. So we are coming to IPAR privilege module. So the first example shows um, how to make sure that a privilege is present. So it creates a um, privilege, broad privilege with the description, with the same as description. Um, in the second part, you see, you can also use action member here to add permissions. So this example makes sure that write IPA configuration, system write DNS configuration, and system update DNS ent entries is present for this permission. And additionally, as before, um, as for all modules, you can use state absent also with action member to make sure that permissions are not there. And we are coming to IPA role module. This is a little bit more than the others. Um, so in the first example, you see um, it's ensuring that a role is present with all members. So you see here a role with the name same role. There's a, with the user pinky, with a group, group 01, with a host, host 01, example column, with a host group, and with two privileges, group administrators and user administrators and a service, service 01. Um, all parameters, user group, host, host group privilege and service can be treated with action member. That means you, are, um, you can ensure that a user group, host, host group privilege or service is present within a role or absent. So you see two examples for this on the right side. So the first example, make sure that the user pinky exists in this role. And in the second one, you see that the service server one 
um, exists. Make sure that the service server one exists in, in this role. You can also use state absent here to make sure that um, users groups, host, host group privileges or services are absent within a role. So, and finally, we have the IPA self-service module. So here, a self-service users can manage their own details is, uh, will be created or will be ensured that it exists with permission write, write and attributes, title and initials. And in the second example, um, you see um, action member again with the attribute here. So this makes sure that the initials is really present in this self-service. Um, you can also use state absent here to make sure that attributes are not present, not, not present within a self-service. I think we are fast. So we are coming to utilities. So um, a nice utility has been added for Ansible Free AP um, to make it easier for people to create new modules. So this is called new module. It's placed in utils subdirectory in GitHub and also um, in, in, the uh, in the releases. It needs a module name of the module you want to create your author name and your author email address. Um, it has three options um, to create a module with member support. So members, as you have seen before, with attributes, users, groups, and so on, and to force the creation of this module. Um, this new module was used to create IPOLocation. So IPOLocation was the test bed for this script. And it automatically creates several directories and files for you um, that so far you needed to create on your own. So it will create, oh, there's a modules directory missing. It should be plugins modules, I'm sorry. Plugins modules, IPAM module pi. Um, it will also create um, playbook, example playbooks for your module and playbooks my module subdirectory. So these are my module absent and present, and you should add more than those. So these are the basic ones um, to make sure that the module is doing something. Um, and it will also create the basic test. So in tests my module, it will create a file test my module YAML, which also um, contains the absent and present um, examples uh, with additional tests to make sure that they are item pattern. So they will be executed once um, with um, a expected result um, of changed and the second one it will be executed with a result of not changed. And additionally it creates the readme my module YAML file. So all these are skeletons that you need to fill with life. Um, so, but it should give a good start to create new modules for hands for free IPA. So I think we have time for a small demo um, of IPA backup role. Um, let me change to this. So here, Come on. It's not doing what it should do. So this is from a colleague of mine. He created that. Let's start it again. From the beginning. So So on the left side, you see the controller. On the right side, you see he's logging into um, Can you zoom the server. It up a little bit. And he is making his. Can you zoom it up? It's Pardon? not legible on the recording, I think. If you can't, yeah, perfect. Thank you. Yeah, Hi. awesome. Is it better now? 
Okay. Should I start it from the beginning? I think you can. You have five minutes easily. Okay. Ah, okay now. So on the left side, you see the controller. On the right side, you see this. Um, he's logging into the server. He's checking the IPA version. So this is a Fedora 32, so it's 4.8.10. And you also see it's a Fedora release 32. He's looking into the Valib um, IPA backup directory, and it's empty right now. On the left side, you see um, um, the backup YAML file. So a backup to the controller. Keep on the server is no. This is the default. IPA backup data. So you can limit also if it's a full backup or not a full backup. And in this case, he's only doing the data backup. So um, Ansible Free API is running now. You see um, it's trying to find out what kind of machine it is, um, information to get the backup directory from IPA platform, from the installed IPA um, distribution um, release. So that was a little bit fast. <laughs> um, at first, it was copying the backup from the server. You see in, in on top still, and it removed the backup from the server. And on the right side, you see there is no backup. And Still, IPA is working. He is removing sudo command, um, a sudo command um, to show that if he is replying the backup, it will be back. So right now, you see he is replacing the backup name in, in the restore YAML file. So you see backup from controller, yes. Keep on server, no. This is not needed in this case. Backup data, yes, and no logs, yes. And now he's restoring. At first, you see the backup has been copied to the server, um, and it is it's applied now. This normally takes some time, so it's better to have it in a demo. And it was also ensuring that the firewall is running and the firewall is configured properly. Now it's restoring the backup. And it's done. So on the right side, you see the formally removed sudo command what it exists again. So the backup was working. So um, for all the roles and the modules, we have the whole documentation on um, Ansible Free AP GitHub source repository. Um, you can start directly there. There is the whole documentation of all parameters. There are lots of examples. Um, if you look into the test subfolder, you will see all the tests that we are running upstream to do the tests. So these are item potency tests. If you have an issue, um, please go to issues on this GitHub repository. And if you want to contact us on IRC, there is a free IPA channel on Freenode. This can uh, this is also used for Ansible free IPA, not only for free IPA. So do you have questions? Okay. So we have one question in the chat, a QA section. Um, is IP admin password clear text password for admin? Um, no, you don't need to have it clear. Um, this is only here in the example so that you see it. You can use Ansible Vault for this, but you can also use GSS API for that. There is an example for the GSS API usage in, in the documentation in Ansible Free API upstream and also one for vault usage with deployment um, in the client and replica role, as far as I remember. It's only here to make sure, yeah, you need to, to provide this setting somehow, but it's up to you how. 
Yes. Uh, so the attendee, I think, missed some initial slides. Uh, <clears throat> which IPA version these modules are compatible with? Uh, right from the initial one. So, we are making sure, as written here, that all management modules are working with IPA four four point four plus. This is real seven, early real seven, yeah, early real seven. So real seven is now at four, four six, I think. Um, in yes. the latest versions there, in real eight we have four eight. So um, and also in Fedora we have four eight. Now so at four nine. I'm sorry. Um, so um, we cannot support IPA prior to 4.4 because there was a big API change in, a, in IPA. I don't see any other questions. OK, I will give people more time, opportunity to ask another question, and I will ask my own. So if I install free IPA, uh, am I supposed to then configure everything through Ansible and is it possible or do I still have to edit some configuration files on the machine manually? This de depends heavily on what you need to configure. So um, if so the normal deployment is whole is completely can you com can completely done can completely be done with the deployment roles in Ansible Free API. They support all parameters that are also um, available on the command line clients. For management, um, you see, we have already a longer list of modules, but we are still missing some. So there are lots of IPA commands, and we are still adding management modules. So the list is not complete yet. But you see, we already have a long list, but you most likely find something that is not there yet. And you can use Ansible Free API in the normal commands. You can mix them for, for, for the management. This is no problem. Um, all the modules are using um, the, um, and, uh, the Free IPA API so they're not implementing things differently. Um, not, not so much a question, more of a uh, caveat. So uh, we've been using the um, Ansible free IPA uh, roles in Fedora infrastructure. And uh, we found uh, that there is a good way to shoot yourself in the foot if you um, like structure uh, structure the logic ar around the the clients connected to the ipa server because if you then have a an ipa client role and they all attempt the same thing on the ipa server like you delegate that to the ipa server to uh, ensure that a certain host group user group whatever exists so something they will step on each other's toes uh toes uh, like there's a race condition in there and um, so it's probably better to structure it from the server view, like collect the information you have about all the clients that need to be connected, all the users and stuff, and then uh, execute it all in one go, because then you won't have these, these issues. Um, OK. So you use several clients to like we we, we have ma many change. nodes that um, hook up with the IPA server for identity ma management, and um, we have rules for uh, who's allowed to even log into the machine, uh, who's allowed to use sudo to become root stuff like that, and for that we use the HBAC and sudo rules, and um, if we. Uh, hook that up with with the uh, client node in question all of these will be executed in parallel ac across the uh, the whole set of ansible hosts and then if you touch the same uh, sudo rule or hbeck rule 
like ensure that it's present or that some host is in it, then the same IPA commands will be executed uh, touching the same IPA objects at roughly the same time. And this will lead to, yeah. Um, small question here. Um, how, how have you used Ansible Free API on the uh, client for management? So you use uh, management modules like on the it's, client? Um, we, we have a role, IPA slash client, that just says, okay, this host is a, a client host to the IPA server. Identity man management is done by the, by the IPA server. Um, then when we have uh, cl cluster-wide rules, like uh, this group is, like this sysadmin group is allowed to do anything, anywhere, stuff like that. And if, if you have, have these things that aff affect multiple hosts, but hooked up logically with the client side, then um, like you have you have a certain group of clients that you run your playbook on, and all of them will try to then execute the same IPA HBAC rule or IPA pseudo rule statement in parallel, and then step on each other's toes because one will one will uh, cre okay. say cre create the rule, the other one will try to create the rule, then fail because it already exists. So um, that's just a caveat uh, to uh, uh, formulate okay. your your uh, Ansible playbooks from from a server side view, because then then you you can you can just co or collect. Oh, these are the hosts in question. These are the the rules that have to be applied for these hosts, so that we can have the the correct access to people and uh, services and stuff like that because th then everything will be done in order and um not step on uh, step on like you, you won't have these race conditions okay but this is that there are two things here so this is general ipa thing so this is not yeah of course of course it's the APA. Uh, Ansible Free API is only helping with this because it's doing this, or it's it's trying exactly. to execute it yeah. on all hosts at the same time. Um, but um, there is one question um, right now: Ansible Free API management modules are not able to be run on yes, the client you, machines. But they they run in the context of the client machine, like the Ansible Ansible yeah uh, Ansible playbook. No. Um, the the, uh, the the command execute has, has a couple of hosts in in the play at that point and it will want to uh, execute the task on behalf of these hosts all at the same time so we, at first we uh, yeah. we we helped ourselves with just um, throttling this to one which works but is super slow <laughs> and then we re then we had to restructure it so sure. that there is that that we had a decent perf performance but because we're talking about somewhat up of 200 hosts which could be if you do a main playbook run or something 